Florence Labadie was an American actress in the early days of the silent film era. Though little known today, she was a major star between 1911 and 1917. Her career was at its height when she died at age 29 from injuries sustained in an automobile accident. Early life, while her film career is well documented, her early life is somewhat clouded in mystery, including who her real parents were and what her birth name was. She was the adopted daughter of the Labadi family. Joseph E. Labadi was believed to have been born in Montreal, Quebec, and is said to have been a prominent attorney there at one time. His wife, the former Amanda Victor, is said to have been born in Europe, possibly Paris. Her adoptive uncle, Odien Labadi, maintained an estate in nearby St. Lambert. Other sources have claimed that she was born in Austin, Texas and adopted by the Labadi family. One source states plainly that she was born in Montreal, another that she was born Florence Ross in Manhattan on April 27, 1888. Florence was educated in New York City schools and at the Convent of Notre Dame in Montreal. The Internet Movie Database lists her birthplace as New York City, with the birth name of Florence Russ. While there is much evidence of her having been raised in Montreal, in an alleged sworn deposition on October 8, 1917, a New York woman named Marie C. Russ had claimed to be Florence's biological mother and referred to a Russ family burial plot in Brooklyn's Greenwood Cemetery, with lot number 17187 being reserved for Florence Russ, also known as Florence Labadi. This supposed legal deposition was dated five days before Florence's death. There was evidence to support that she was the granddaughter of a Louisa Russ, who had purchased the family plot in Greenwood. There were also indications that she was legally adopted by Joseph Labadi as a child, and her name changed. However, although it is likely that she was adopted, it might be noted that at the time of her deposition, Marie C. Russ was residing in the Home for Incurables Mental Institution, in New York City. Although the indications are that Labadi was adopted, Marie C. Russ stated in the deposition that the adoption was legal. Career Success Having completed her studies, she was offered work as a fashion model in New York City. Once there, in early 1908 she obtained a small part in a stage play. Following this, she signed to tour with one of the road companies and for the next two years appeared on stage in various places in the eastern part of the United States. During this period she met a fellow Canadian, the young actress Mary Pickford, who in 1909 invited Florence to watch the making of a motion picture at the Biograph studio in Manhattan. Given an impromptu bit part, Florence was invited back to Biograph Studios to participate in another film later that year. She would go on to make several films under the renowned D.W. Griffith, with her first credited film being in the 1909 film The Politician's Love Story, starring Max Sennett and Kathleen Williams. In 1911, her career took a leap when she was hired by Edwin Thanhauser of the Thanhauser Film Corporation in New Rochelle, New York. With her sophistication and beauty, Florence Labadi soon became Thanhauser's most prominent actress, appearing in dozens of films over the next two years. Her most remembered films of that period were The Tempest, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, a film adaptation of the Robert Louis Stevenson story, and the first film of Shakespeare's Cymeline. Her most well-known work was in the 1914-1915 serial, The Million Dollar Mystery. Athletic and daring, in these films she performed all her own stunts. In 1915, she was featured in the magazine Real Life, which described her as the beautiful and talented Florence Labadi, of the Thanhauser Studios, conceded one of the foremost of American screen players. Over a course of six years Labadi's career had taken her to top billing as a film actress. World War I When World War I broke out in Europe in 1914, Canada immediately joined the war, and as a result, Several of Florence Labadi a Euro unregistered trademark s young male friends and relatives back home in Montreal were immediately shipped overseas. She had many movie fans in Canada and according to one New York newspaper, in 1915 a young soldier fighting in the trenches at the front in northern France wrote to her, sending dozens of photographs that graphically depicted the horrors of the war. Deeply affected, Labadi became a vigorous advocate for peace 
traveling the United States with a Streopticon slideshow of the sold era Euro unregistered trademark S photographs, warning about the terrible dangers of going to war. Personal life, for a time, she was engaged to a Cadillac salesman named Val Harsh. They broke up, and she became involved with Daniel Carson Goodman, a writer who worked on the scenario for Thanhouse's serial Zudra. Death In August 1917, La Bedi was at the height of her motion picture success. She had appeared in 185 films since 1909, 32 fewer than Mary Pigford's 217 films during the same period. Her film The Woman in White had just been released in July 1917. Her latest two films, The Man Without a Country, a film adaptation of Edward Everett Hale's The Man Without a Country, and War on the Woman, would also soon be released, both on September 9, 1917. Although the Thanhauser Corporation had been struggling since the 1914 automobile accident death of Charles J. Height, her career was thriving and had been their saving grace. Less than a month earlier, she had announced that she was leaving Thanhauser, and she had several other film corporations willing to pick her up on contract immediately. On August 28, 1917, while driving near Ossining, New York in the company of her fiancé, Daniel Carson Goodman, the brakes on La Badia Euro unregistered trademark S car failed and the vehicle plunged down a hill, overturning at the bottom. While Goodman escaped with only a broken leg, La Badia was thrown from the vehicle and suffered serious injuries, including a compound fracture of the pelvis. Hospitalized, she clung to life for more than six weeks and seemed to be improving, but suddenly died on October 13. From septicemia. With her death, she became the first major female film star to die while her career was at its peak, and the movie going public mourned her death. After a large funeral, she was interred in an unmarked grave in the Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn, New York, the same cemetery included by Marie C. Russ in her legal proceedings days before her death, with Marie Russ claiming to have been her actual birth mother in sworn deposition. Obituary notices stated La Bedi was survived by her mother, Amanda La Bedi, with no mention of her having been adopted. This omission would have been customary at the time. Due to her death, it is unknown what her prolonged impact in films would have been. Although little remembered now, she was once a top build star. Under New York laws, the property of her estate was divided between Mr. and Mrs. Joseph La Bedi. In 2014, Ned Thanhauser, the grandson of Edwin Thanhauser, raised money for a proper headstone for La Bedi, which was installed on April 27 of that year, on what would have been her 126th birthday. Selected filmography, Getting Even, In the Window Recess, Bobby, The Coward, The Broken Cross, How She Triumphed, The Buddhist Priestess, David Copperfield, Enoch Arden, The Tempest, The Indian Brothers, The Blind Princess and The Poet, Paradise Lost, Cinderella, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde the Star of Bethlehem, The Merchant of Venice, Undin, The Evidence of the Film, The Million Dollar Mystery, The Adventures of Florence, The Country Girl, Monsieur Lecoq, The Fear of Poverty, The Return of Draw Egan, Ward of the King, Divorce and the Daughter, The Woman in White, Extant Library of Congress, War and the Woman, The Man Without a Country. See also References. Florence La Bedi pronounces her name La Bardi. It's French and there is no accent on any syllable. Some well-meaning persons pronounce it La Bodi, which makes Florence shudder and say, sounds like a coroner's inquest. The La Bedis pronounce their name thus, La Bedi, with accent on the first syllable. The Bod is pronounced the same as in Body. Both quoted in Bowers, Q. David. La Bedi, Florence. Thanhauser Films, An Encyclopedia and History. Retrieved February 6, 2015. 1. Foster, Charles. Stardust and Shadows, Canadians in Early Hollywood. Dune Duran ISBN 9781770700987. 2. Golden, Eve. Golden Images, 41 Essays on Silent Film Stars. McFarland ISBN 9780786483389. 3. Lowe, Denise. 
an encyclopedic dictionary of women in early American films, 1895 to 1930. Routledge ISBN 9781317718963. 4. IMDb International Movie Database. 5. Ball, Robert Hamilton. Shakespeare on Silent Film, A Strange Eventful History Volume 1 of Routledge Library Editions, Film and Literature. Routledge ISBN 9781134980800. Ball, Robert Hamilton. 1955. The Woman in White. 6. Foster, Charles. Stardust and Shadows, Canadians in Early Hollywood. Dune Duran ISBN 9781770700982. Ball, Robert Hamilton. 1971 Stardust and Shadows, 2000, Toronto, Dundon Press, Lima Daily News, Local Playhouses, January 29, 1918, pages 8. External links, Florence Labadie at the Internet Movie Database, Florence Labadie Profile and Extant Films at Thanhauser.org, Florence Labadie, Lost Luminary of the Silent Film Tribute Site, Florence Labadie at Find a Grave, Florence Labadie Portrait Helping Out the War Effort New York Public Library